Oi, oi. Um, tips for Thursday, I guess. I'm watching, this is like halfway through, we're up to three o'clock, so we're sort of kind of halfway through, day two racing, and Christ, that weather, the ground and everything's making, um, yeah, making, maybe predicting things and fancying stuff a little bit tricky, um, but hey oh, we go as we go, don't we? Hopefully, it's going to, well, it's a new course tomorrow, so the track will be a bit fresher. I do wonder whether he did put some water on it yesterday as well, so I'm worried about the state that it's going to be in, but we'll see those reports in the morning, but I don't think a lot of the horses... Uh, that I'm going to talk about are really ground dependent. So let's just crack on with it. Keep this one short again. Again, thank you for all the support. Really appreciate it. the comments, the likes, the subscriptions. Keep it coming because this is flying at the minute. So we've got the turners to begin with. Again, we won't really talk too much about race views because I'm just going to talk about the ones that I'll be betting in there, what my angle is in for it. I will post a link below to what I fancy of each race is. I haven't done every single runner, but I'm going to put a summary up for races themselves. Sorry, my eyes are going everywhere. So, Turners, um, I'm either laying Bob Ollinger or I'm back in Gallop de Champ. Now, when it came to the Punchtown Festival last year, I wanted to lay Envoy when he ran against Monkfish and Cool Reeve, won the race. Um, and so I backed Monkfish, but really I was thinking, crap, but then if Envoy gets beat, but is Cool Reeve going to win it? So essentially, the long story short is I ended up backing Monkfish and laying Envoy, which meant I lost like a tenner on the race because Cool Reeve won. So it's a stupid thing to do. So I'm semi-tempted just to lay Bob Ollinger, um, but then I might just back Gallop into Champ. So I just need to work it out. The price difference is, say for 100 quid, for example, I might make 90 pounds, I might be making like 90 quid profit for laying, whereas if I backed, I could make 110. So it's like a 20% swing. So just wait out, but I'm taking on Bob, basically, in the opener. Then the Potemps, the second race, is an absolute minefield, like genuinely... There's lots of plots and all these theory things that go on there. Ground's going to make a difference to a lot that are in there. I have backed Winter Fog when the um, weights came out. A friend of mine messed with me and said this will, this will go very close. So I've backed Winter Fog. I do like Pylon as well, or Pillion, however we're going to say it. Very close to the Martin Pipe a couple of years back. I know people have questioned his form this year, but I think he's run all right. Looking for anything else in there, I can't really have too much of an interest. So that's as far as I've bet so far. I might put some doubles and stuff on, but they would be novelty bets and of no real interest to anyone to follow when it comes to the Ryanair I do think Alaho will win I mean I need to delve in a bit more about grounds and stuff but it doesn't really bother me obviously conflated dropping back to in trip is I think it's going to work out nicely for him but when you look at all the horses in behind even in the betting without market they've all got a chance um I did back Shamblu a long time ago on the exchanges I know I wasn't doing anti-post betting, but I saw an opportunity to back him at a price because they said they were only going to run him in this. They weren't going to go for the handicaps. So I've got a free roll on Shamblu without Alaho, and then I've got a few good on Janadil without Alaho as well. So that's the two ways I've played that. Um, Stairs Hurdle, I've already talked about this in my other videos. I haven't got it all on yet. I've got a few quid on, uh, again, like maybe a week or two weeks ago because there wasn't much liquidity in the place market, but I'm going to smash the granny out of Time Hill and Floor Porter to place. Um, so that's that's my angle, that's my in for this particular race. I won't have anything on either of them to win, I don't think. I, well, I might have from a small multi, but the bet tomorrow is going to be Time Hill, Floor, Imported to Place. I, the way I'm looking at it, and the reason I'm saying that, is that there's three places up for grabs. They're both going to be around about even money, if not a tiny bit bigger. So basically, if either one of them places in the first three, then you're covering yourself by backing both. And when one of them, when, when they both place, you're basically being paid at a higher amount. I think it's a very low risk strategy. Um, Champ and Paisley, 10 year olds don't win it, although they could place, couldn't they? But I'm, I'm doing that. Then for the plate, there's loads of horses I think have got a chance in here. Fusel Raffles will be carrying a couple of quid, but ground going bad. He, he doesn't need good ground, but it's not ideal. I can't have the ones towards the head of the market. I know Lahon Press has now gone and won. Oscar Elite ran well, and the glancing Queen was in between those at the dipper, but I wasn't supposed to be talking about those summaries and stuff, was I? But sh she should have beaten them at two and a half, shouldn't she, if they're all three milers? Um, so in that particular race... Born by the Sea for Paul John Gilligan. I'm having a go on him at a price. Um, he's like a 40 to 1 poke, so it doesn't take very much to be staking on that. Spirit of the Games has been third and sixth in this race, 2019 and 2020, respectively. He's £11 lower than those marks. Hinted at a revival behind Toy and Freight. So Spirit of the Games is getting a bet. And then, like I say, a little bit on Fuser Raffles. But I wouldn't be overly confident. I'm just massively against Imperial Alcazar and the Glancing Queen. Then we talk about the Mayor's Novice. I think Dino Blue is the good thing. She's a short price favourite. Well, shortish. She's five to two inchy, but I think she should probably win. My actual bet into the race. I like Statue Ever. The ground's killed her. Mighty Blue. She was third in the race last year. She's a 25 to one poke. Smash the granny out of her each way is my advice. I think she's got a chance of winning it as well as definitely placing. And then in the Kim Muir, um, Schoolboy Owls has got an obvious chance. 
Come on, Teddy would have had a bit of a chance, but I'm worried about him a tiny bit now. There's a few that could have a squeak. Mr. Coffee, now the ground's gone bad. I really, really, really like, and I got him going for a few quid. Um, so I'm happy with that. But I'm got, starting to get stuck into Mr. Fog Patches for Patrick Mullins. 12 to 1 point of bet for his survive. That's not going to last very long. So again, smash the granny out of him. His run back in December behind Commodore was massive when he was out the back. Everything else just pulled up. So they are my bets for Thursday. Tread a bit carefully, but... You know, we've got a lot of time from now until tomorrow to see how the ground goes, see how the course fares out. So just bear with yourselves. I know there's offers and there's prices and it's exciting to get involved, but they are my thoughts. I've gone over five minutes. I'm sorry. Thanks again for the comments, subscription and likes. I know it might have been tough for a few people today, but just keep going. We've got two more days of decent racing. Friday's an absolute corker. So I'll be back then. Thank you again and goodbye.